Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to this video tutorial on creating an ASP.NET Core application with Angular 7. In the last video tutorial, we created the JWT Interceptor class, which is responsible for attaching all the HTTP requests with this authorization header, which contains the bearer token. In simple words, it means that every time an HTTP request is intercepted, that request will be attached with a JWT token of the valid user. Now, when we go to the application, before that, we want to first go ahead and correct a small mistake that I did in the last video tutorial. This here is not a colon, it's an equal to symbol. Unfortunately, in your browser, it's not going to show you as an error under the console. So it's very hard to detect it. But this should be an equal to symbol here, not a colon. Secondly, this is not a quotation mark. It is a back quote. So a back quote symbol can be found under the escape key on your keyboard. It's the same button which contains the tilde symbol. So if you don't find this back quote on your keyboard, which is Sometimes, I don't know, some people might not find it. They have a keyboard that doesn't contain it. So all you can do is use a single quote and how you concatenate a string. You'll do the follow the same process. You'll add a space here. You'll add a single quote again, then add a plus to concatenate and then concatenate the token. But now I'm going to use a back quote because my keyboard has a back quote symbol on it. So that's these mistakes that need to be corrected. So go ahead and correct this. Now let's open our browser. I'm already logged into the application. So I have a valid JWT token that was provided by when I logged in. But when I go to the network tab and I try to see that the call was made for get products, it still says unauthorized. And it is going to say unauthorized. That's because if you go back to your JWT interceptor class, you will notice Look at this decorator over here. What does this decorator say? That all the dependencies for this particular uh, class, which is JWT interceptor, are provided inside the root. So all these dependencies are provided inside the root. But when it goes to the root to confirm that does are all these dependencies provided there. So let's go to the app.module.ts file first and you will notice that it when the request goes to double check here it finds out that the providers array is empty therefore it will not attach the token so first thing that we want to do here is we need to mention the service that uh, needs to is responsible for our http interceptor so the http interceptor is de dependent on the auth guard service so you'll add it over here. Even though we have imported it here, we have not yet added it in the providers array. And it's very important that we add it here. Second thing that we want to do is also add our interceptor. The way we will add the interceptor is, so anytime an HTTP request is made, it will go through this app module.ts, that's the root of your application. So the the moment it detects an http request doesn't matter what kind of http request whether it is an uh, http post http get http delete doesn't matter as soon as it intercepts it we need to make sure that the jwt token needs to be added if the user is logged in on a protected route like products so for that what we are going to do is we are going to add the provide providers over here the dependencies over here so using the provide property we will provide the http underscore interceptors that is responsible for intercepting the and attaching the tokens and then we will specify after the interception is like made on a request the next step is to use the following class and the class is JWT interceptor. Why we want to use this class? Because this class contains the logic for attaching the token by creating a copy of the request and then setting the 
header so we are not modifying once again the previous request we are just setting a new value which is authorization next thing is we therefore when we are not creating a new or not creating a new request we are more not even modifying it we are just setting a value so what we have to do is we have to say multi is equal to true the multi property multi property is also responsible if you have multiple interceptors in this case i have only one interceptor but some programs generally in real world will have multiple interceptors so one interceptor depends on the other interceptor so in that way we have to set this to like the auth guard service this interceptor depends on the auth guard service so it is very important that we set this to true now the auth guard service will depend on the account service to get the value if the user is logged in and so on so now after we have set this we have to also make sure that inside our product module.ts as well we set these values because a product module.ts also there are components or services that will look for the required dependencies and it will for the product routing module which is totally separate it will go and search for the dependencies inside the product module.ts file so we have to mention where they can find these dependencies over here and the http interceptors i'll just type it again so i'll get the inter uh, intellisense and jwt intercept class and please make sure you change this to you remove the node modules and save this now also i didn't check if it added node modules over here no it didn't okay now we can save this now let's go back to our application and here let's go to products and now we are not getting any error and if you see we are getting a 200 response that's because now you see this value here it says authorization so we intercepted the request and then we left all the other values the same we just added a new value which is authorization with the bearer token so when we have attached the token the request goes to the server and then the server will verify the token if it's valid it will return the response now we don't have any products in our database the response is going to be an empty array as soon as you add the products you will see a bunch of products inside this uh, list so let's go ahead and at least add some products here so let's open azure data studio and go to the products table so products added data see it has no values so let's add some values so i have added three demo products inside the database and i've added them from azure data studio because i don't have the model pop-up ready for adding new products inside the database so for that i have created directly added the products from azure data studio now i have added three products and now i've run executed the query and then i will go ahead to the browser window of my application and now try to refresh this page so that it can go ahead and get the values of the products so when i click refresh as you see that the product table is loading and i can see that there are three products and it says in stock yes yes and the buttons are missing the uh, icons for font awesome also we have to fix this price uh, uh, that's been displayed here as an error that's because we forgot to add another curly brace over here so let's go ahead and do that itself from the product list component.html and for the 
price let's add one more curly brace here now let's save this go back and here that should be fixed also note that when we are using pipes for currency if you go back to the application we're using currency pipes and we have added decimals for two places you will notice that in the database I have not added any decimal points or values after decimal point I've just rounded the figure here and if you go back to the browser now angular will automatically add the currency symbol and also add the decimal values that's because we have used the pipes so that's one good feature of using angular framework now also one thing you will notice that we are using data tables and the data tables has not yet loaded so we are getting some error here and that's related to data table as well so we will fix this error in the next video tutorial and make sure that when the table loads we are making use of the data tables api to load these products so we can sort them and we can search them using the search live search box on the data tables api and also we will add the font awesome icons so that these buttons look slightly better than how they appear now so uh, go ahead and add some products so when we start the video tutorial for the for fixing these issues we'll have you'll have some products inside your database and when you try to load them your table you can see the pagination as well at the bottom so for now let's end this video tutorial in the next video tutorial we will fix this data tables issue and also add the font or some icons and then test the data table api thank you for watching